Catalina Island is quite the hidden gem in Los Angeles. I have been living in Southern California for about seven years now, and the first time I heard of the island was just a few years ago. It's located southwest of LA, and it's a gorgeous beach town that can only be reached by ferry. This was my first time riding the Catalina Express, and I departed from the Long Beach port. The ride was roughly an hour, and a round trip ticket cost about $75. And if you're bringing your fur baby, they can ride for free. I happened to go on a weekend that had a lot of rain in the forecast, but despite the on and off showers, I actually found plenty of things to do. From beaches to hiking, here are my top eight things to do on Catalina Island. Number one, Avalon Beaches. It's no surprise that you will have plenty of beach options in Catalina. Descanso Beach is a private beach with public access that is just beyond the world famous Catalina Casino. This beach is part of the Descanso Beach Club, which offers a restaurant, bar, and cabana rentals. Middle Beach overlooks the center of the harbor, and this is where the majority of the town's shops and restaurants are located. Number two, Descanso Canyon. The canyon is situated just 600 feet above the Descanso Beach Club, and there are plenty of activities at the Aerial Adventure Park. None of the outdoor activities are pet friendly, so I parked here and took Zoe to the grassy area where she had plenty of space to herself, and she really enjoyed running around the area. Number three, Catalina Casino. I initially thought the casino was a Vegas style gambling venue, but it's actually a massive theater and event space. And you can't miss this building as its structure dominates the island. Number four, Green Pier. If you're looking for things to do on the island, the visitor center is located here. So it's a great place to stop and get visitor information if you're keen on diving and safari tours. Number five, take a scenic drive. If you want to drive around the island, you can rent a golf cart and easily explore the mountain terrain. I spent about an hour driving around the island, which was plenty of time to cover the one square mile island. Number six, Wrigley Memorial and Botanical Garden. The drive up the mountain to the Botanical Garden was gorgeous and I spotted several deer along the way. I wasn't aware that dogs weren't allowed inside the garden, so I wasn't able to enter the premises. However, the guide suggested dog-friendly hikes in the area. Nonetheless, I enjoyed the scenic drive up and hope to return to the garden someday. Number seven, Downtown Avalon. There are plenty of shops and dining options in Downtown Avalon, and it's a pleasant area to walk around. We had dinner on our first night at Blue Water Avalon, where we had the best views of the Green Pier. Number eight, the Metropole Marketplace. Across the street from Blue Water Avalon is the Metropole Marketplace, which is an adorable cobblestone village. I purchased a cup of coffee and a couple of fresh baked cookies at the Catalina Coffee and Cookie Company. I really enjoyed my time on this island, even though I didn't have the best of luck with the weather. Of course, there are still plenty of things you can do on the island, but this gives you an idea of how much the island has to offer. I hope you found this guide useful and please give it a thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to subscribe for more of our travel videos.